Welcome, everyone. Minister. Thanks very much, Andrea, and um, thank you for, um, for joining us this afternoon. We've had a really um, excellent meeting, I would say, um, where we had the Ministers for European Affairs uh, from all 27 EU member states, um, from all of the candidate countries, and um, also yesterday we had a meeting with uh, the aspiring candidates. Um, so um, the focus of our discussion uh, was uh, very much on the question of democratic legitimacy um, and also on the question of enlargement. And of course, there was some overlap um, between, between those two topics. Um, I think um, from our point of view, um, the question of democratic legitimacy is, if you like, it's the fourth strand of the Van Rompuy process of economic and uh, monetary union. And I think that there's a risk as we focus on um, all aspects of um, eco economic coordination, economic governance, um, budgetary oversight and so on, that we maybe lose sight of the need to strengthen all of those procedures with enhanced um, legitimacy. Um, so we've had taken the opportunity to, um, to focus on that topic specifically um, amongst the European Affairs Ministers. Um, and um, we based our discussions on a document which was um, produced um, by Bridget Laffin, um, who's a leading academic in Ireland, um, professor of European politics in University College Dublin. Last night she introduced her paper to us, and then this morning we had an opportunity to have a good round table on that. I think you know this is a question with um, significant um, challenges, um, given that almost 35% of European citizens feel that their voice is not heard at European level. So it, it is a really big challenge and one um, that I think European Affairs Ministers have a particular responsibility to try to address. Um, we have um, spent uh, the, the morning discussing the elements and the questions that were put forward by, by Professor Laffin. Um, I think it's fair to say that there is a lot of consensus amongst member states um, about the need to build on the provisions of the Lisbon Treaty. So uh, the European Parliament has a, has a very special uh, and enhanced role under the provisions of the Lisbon Treaty, but we really need to give that effect. And we also need to communicate that role to, to citizens. I'm not sure that citizens are yet fully uh, appraised of the new powers that their directly elected chamber at European level has. So that's a very important task for us. There's also a very important role for national parliaments. Um, and under the Lisbon Treaty, again, the role of national parliaments is enhan enhanced and strengthened. Uh, one proposal that the Irish presidency has, and I think that there was broad agreement on this today, is that for the European semester process, which is the process of managing the um, economic coordination and governance of the European Union, that um, in, throughout that process that the national parliaments would be uh, much more deeply involved and that they would be invited um, by the presidency and the commission to, in fact, debate uh, the country-specific recommendations in national parliament so that there is more of a sense of ownership over that process and much more transparency. And I think that that's a very positive um, uh, process. Of course, we're also facing European elections in 2014. Uh, and again, the Lisbon Treaty has changed the way in which um, those elections uh, will, will operate and will work. Um, so there was, again, general agreement amongst the European Affairs Ministers today that the political party should put forward a clear candidate um, for the position of President of the Commission, and they would run election campaigns right across the EU 27 member states, soon to be 28, by, before 2014, um, on the basis of a, a platform, clear platform, which is led by, um, by uh, an individual who was selected uh, by those political parties. I think that's very important uh, in terms of putting a face on European politics and uh, creating more of a European dynamic. I think it's clear that European issues are much more to topical at a national level now, um, and we need to, I suppose, harness that interest in European politics and uh, genuinely try to create a Europe-wide debate on the future of Europe, and I think 2014 um, is the clear uh, opportunity to do that. Um, we've also um, had a very good discussion on enlargement. Um, we, I, I don't want to, to go into too much detail because I know Commissioner Fuller is going to, um, to talk about it. Um, but I would say that the Irish Presidency is very supportive of the enlargement process. We hope to inject momentum into enlargement. We um, benefited from um, enlargement 40 years ago. 
um, being one of the first accession countries to the European, uh, European Economic Community at the time. Uh, in 2004, we presided over the biggest ever enlargement uh, of the EU when 10 new member states joined. And we see a big opportunity now to, um, to uh, inject momentum into the process um, and particularly to see uh, progress um, in, um, in the Western Balkans where there has been a clear commitment um, uh, 10 years ago exactly uh, to a European perspective for all of the countries of the Western Balkans. We also had an opportunity to discuss um, enlargement in Turkey uh, and the, the, um, the process that has been stalled and we see some opportunity to reignite the process, possibly to open a chapter with Turkey and also um, um, the discussion on Iceland. Uh, Iceland, of course, um, is, is one of the most advanced countries in terms of the accession process. Um, they have opened the vast majority of chapters and uh, I will visit Iceland uh, later this week for my second visit to Reykjavik um, and obviously with the presidency hat on uh, to encourage the process there. Uh, so I will now hand over to Commissioner Fula who will tell you more about enlargement. Thank you.